Well, you know, I was uh, saying a while ago that, uh, and I believe it's true, that almost everything that the uh, people did, men and women, had a purpose. Very, very uh, few things they did just for recreation. I mean, there, there was no recreation except that you might take some of the work that you were doing and pretend that it was fun, you know. <clears throat> but uh, fox hunting may be the only exception. Now, trapping and hunting other, especially fur-bearing bearing animals, was uh, very much part of the income and and uh, culture of the region. But fox hunting, as it was done here in, um, in Appalachia, was done purely for uh, recreation, I guess. I remember my grandfather uh, said once that they were going fox hunting and they would go up on top of the mountain of the night <clears throat> and they would get up on top of that big, uh, what they call a big ridge and uh, build a fire and maybe they had some sweet potatoes and uh, some bacon. They'd sit there all night and uh, listen to the hounds. Well, there was three or four of the neighbors and all, each person could tell uh, his hounds bark, the baying of the hounds. So uh, not only could you tell which, which hound was in front, which one was the closest, but you could tell whether they were uh, how far ahead they were, and then they would argue about, now that's mine in the lead now. And uh, the next morning after uh, spending the entire night, they never they never caught the fox. That wasn't the uh, the purpose. But the fox would run up the ridge for a mile or two or three, almost out of hearing distance, and over to another ridge. They knew pretty much where the fox was, uh, was going, and they was, they would say it's kind of a handy Stoopsbury place now. And, <clears throat> but I remember on Sunday morning uh, that uh, you could hear the fox horns because the foxhounds would run pretty much all night and they would be totally exhausted the next morning. And uh, instead of coming home, they would just, uh, wherever they were, whatever uh, neighborhood or homestead they were, uh, nearest, they would just go curl up and stay there for two or three days, skinned up, scratched up, the ears bloody and everything from running all night. So the old men would be going around uh, while they were supposed to be going to church on Sunday morning, blowing these fox horns. Uh, and each fox horn had a distinctive sound and the, the hope was that uh, their respective dogs would hear their respective uh, fox horns and would come in. This one belonged to an old gentleman up on Wilhoyt Creek in um, Sevier County, not too far from Sevierville, and his name, did I say, Tally, Tally Breeden. And um, he was a, uh, the only reason he sold me the horn is he was getting real old and he said, I don't reckon I'll ever be able to, to hunt anymore, so he, he would let me have a some of the horn. Well, there's a, a thick outer covering on the horns that uh, that you would have to, uh, this was actually the outside, and then inside here you had a, a, a layer that was pretty thick, maybe a three quarters, I mean, a, maybe a half an inch, or at least three eighths of an inch. And uh, it was heavy and it wouldn't have much of a sound, so you had to get that out about boiling and boiling and you would take that out and that's about the uh, extent. Of course this same type horn was used for as a powder horn and much more universally used. But uh, yeah, it would be much smaller and uh, usually better done and some carvings on it. Uh, and of course it had a, a plug that went in the end of it here. Uh, You gotta get to. Yeah, well, see, Freddie came. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I've got more talent than I thought. Yeah. I think Freddie, that guy was a good mandolin. Ha 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 ha